So our next presentation will be P2P mixing and unlinkable Bitcoin transactions. So we've, we're, there's a theme here. And the speaker will be Tim Roofing. Hello? So I'm Tim, Tim Roofing. Okay, there's a slide. So I'm Tim Roofing from Saarland University. And this is joint work together with my colleagues at Purdue University, uh, Pedro Moreno Sanchez, who will actually be presenting after me, and Aniket Kate. And this, is, uh, this talk is about peer-to-peer -peer mixing and, and unlinkable Bitcoin transactions. So it actually has some relation to the previous talk. But first, uh, let me give some, some general, uh, let me give you a general problem, which is peer-to-peer -peer mixing. So in peer-to-peer -peer mixing, uh, there's a set of parties, Alice, Bob, Charlie, Dave in this example, and they all have a message, A, B, C, D, and let's say they all have the same length, okay? And what, what those parties want to do is um, they want to publish a mixed list of those messages where mixed basically means like shuffled in a random manner such that they get some anonymity. For example, just looking at, at Bob's message, you shouldn't be able to tell whether it's coming from Alice, Bob, uh, Carol, or Dave. So, um, and another thing that the, that the parties want to do is actually they want to confirm this output. So they, they should agree on this list of messages. And what this actually means in practice uh, depends on the use case. I, I can come to that later. Um, and the, the, the trust model we are in is, is like a fully peer-to-peer -peer trust model. So we have no other party, actually. And the, the peers don't trust each other. And there, there's no like Tor router, maybe, or uh, Onion router, or something like that, to provide anonymity. So the peers are just on their own. And of course, some of them could be malicious, right? And then the, the guarantee we want to get from this is that the anonymity set is the set of honest users. Of course, if, if Alice and, and Dave are, are malicious here, then um, Bob can only, or Bob's message uh, can only be anonymous among Bob and Carol, of course, because the attacker knows that uh, A is his message and D is his message. And another thing uh, we want from the protocol is that it terminates even in the presence of malicious users. And actually, uh, we don't require any, any, any honest majority, so the protocol should terminate even if there are only two honest users basically left. We, we require two honest users because otherwise anonymity doesn't make sense. And if you look at the, at the state of the art of this, this problem, then um, what appears in the literature is basically traditional mix nets run by all the peers. And um, this, for example, has appeared in, in Dissin, the Dissin Shuffle Protocol from CCS 2010, or our own Coin Shuffle Protocol, uh, tailored to Bitcoin for, uh, in, in, at the Sorex 2014. And um, because peers don't trust each other, they basically have to run the mix. They, they all have to implement one of the mixes. And then basically the protocol looks roughly like that, and, and, um, which means that even if everybody is honest, we need uh, O of N communication rounds where n is the number of parties. And this is even worse. Um, if there are f malicious peers in the protocol, then we need O of n f rounds. So actually, these, these traditional mixed net solutions don't scale for this problem. Um, what we actually want to have is um, a dining cryptographer's network, because in a, in a DC net, uh, we could at least hope for constant number of rounds uh, if everybody is honest. Um, however, DC nets are easy to disrupt. It's a particular problem if everybody can potentially be malicious. And, and all approaches to, to solve this disruption problem uh, suffer from a lot of drawbacks. So the, the protocol that comes maybe closest to our setting is by um, Golan Schulz from Eurogroup 2004, but this requires an honest majority. So uh, currently, we don't have a practical peer-to-peer -peer mixing protocol based on DC nets. And uh, the thing I will present today is Dice Mix, and guess uh, what it is? It's a practical peer-to-peer -peer mixing protocol based on DCNets. Um, so if you don't know what a DCNet is, for the, um, for the purpose of this talk, it's easiest to look at this just as a, as a possibility to compute the sum in an anonymous way. So assume we have three parties, maybe. Uh, each of the parties has a bit, one bit message, and they also have symmetric keys um, that are pairwise. Uh, Shared. So, and and maybe Alice has the, sorry, maybe Alice has the message one. And what she does with this message one is she adds the two keys, 
and we are, we're working in the bit field, so um, the result of this is one, and she publishes that, that one. And Bob and Carol do the same with their messages, and then we, we get the uh, published messages, that's one by Alice, one by Bob, and zero by, um, by Carol. And we can add all of these messages together and get the zero again. And this zero is now the sum of the uh, original messages of the users. Why? Because all the, all the symmetric keys that we have added now cancel out because uh, we added each key twice, right? It has been added by, by uh, one user at each side of the, of the shared link. And uh, basically from, from this zero now, um, we can't tell who contributed what part to this sum. So this gives you some privacy here. And um, if, we, if we want to turn this in the real world, the, fr the first thing we can do is, um, of course, we don't on only want to send bits, but, but larger messages, so we can work on a larger finite field and encode our messages as numbers. And then we can run the protocol, and what, what, we, what we then get, maybe if, if we run it with end users, then we get the sum of the end messages. However, of course, in peer-to-peer -peer mixing, we, we don't want to compute a sum, right? We want to compute a list of messages. So uh, what we do to, to, uh, to solve this is that we don't only run this protocol once, but we actually run n versions of it in parallel. And uh, in, in, the, in the first slot, we just have the sum of the messages. In the second slot, users don't send their messages, but they send the messages squared. In the second run, they send the messages to the queue, uh, so to the tree, and so on, up to the end. And what, what we basically get as a result is all those, uh, is these power sums, okay? And now we, uh, it's possible to recover the messages back from those power sums, and it's possible to do that in an efficient way, and, and the idea is that um, Newton's identities basically tell us that the, com the coefficients of the, um, how to compute the coefficients of the poly polynomial that has the messages as the roots, um, given the power sums. So given the power sums, we can compute these this coefficients, and then we can uh, factor the polynomial, and this basically gives us back the messages because the roots of the polynomial are the messages. And then we again have a list of messages, but uh, it's anonymized. So, and, and the cool thing about, about this uh, approach here is that it actually works in constant rounds, and it always works. So, um, that's pretty cool. However, uh, what can easily happen is that maybe there's, there's one malicious user, right? And this ma malicious user, instead of sending a setting what it's supposed to do, it just sends random garbage. And if this one random user just sends random garbage, then of course the, the sums are also just random garbage. And we can't actually we can't reconstruct anything. The whole protocol has, has been disrupted and all information is destroyed. And even worse, we don't know how to handle the situation. So actually we want to exclude malicious users, but um, the DCNet ensures that the malicious user stays anonymous. So we can't do anything here. Um, our, our solution to, uh, to solve this problem basically is um, in case of disruption, break anonymity. And um, Basically, that, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Um, however, I can tell you why this works in, in specific settings. And, and uh, to, to explain that, the easiest is to look at the flowchart of dice mix. And in the beginning, what we do at first is we generate a fresh message. Every, every user generates a fresh message. So instead of using like fixed message as input, we require users to um, generate their messages from a randomly from a uniform, from, from some random distribution. Think of uh, public keys or Bitcoin addresses or some other um, random identities, right? And um, then, okay, everybody, everybody has a message, then we run a key exchange because we, we need the symmetric keys. Then we run the actual DCNet. And then everybody can check if the DCNet indeed has been disrupted. And if it, if it hasn't been disrupted, then fine, okay, we go ahead and, and can confirm the output of the DCNet. But it, if it has been disrupted, then we can reveal session secrets, and the session secrets basically are the private keys of the key exchange. Um, of course, this, at this moment, breaks anonymity, but that's not a problem at all, because uh, we now discard the messages. And if you think of a, of a Bitcoin address, so maybe we just generated in the beginning of the protocol a fresh Bitcoin address, we have never used it for any payments, um, now somebody learns that this, this message be, belongs to a certain user, but now the user just throws it away, right? It, it doesn't matter. 
You, you, you have never used this address in the past for payments, and you will never use it in the future. So it's not a problem at all. But now, because we broke anonymity, everybody can actually replay the, uh, the messages of the other participants and can see who disrupted the protocol, and then we can exclude the, dis, uh, the disruptor. And after the disruptor is excluded, we can just start from scratch and try a new run of the protocol with a new fresh message. Okay, there's another way how the protocol can be disrupted, actually. So, um, I said here conf we confirm the output in the end, but what if not everybody wants to agree on this output? Well, our, our protocol basically um, guarantees that um, if you don't confirm at this step, then you are malicious, which, which means that if somebody refuses to confirm, we can again just exclude him, uh, discard the message, and start from scratch. And if everybody actually provides a confirmation, then the protocol uh, succeeds. And um, this, this freshness criterion, so basically the, the fact that we, that we need uh, to generate fresh messages that are discardable is actually required in this setting. So we, we show in the paper that there is no peer-to-peer um, -peer mixing protocol that at the same time uh, provides anonymity, ter terminates with dishonest majority, and supports fixed messages. And in this setting, of course, what, what we want to give up is the support for fixed messages. Um, because we want anonymity and ter termination. Um, and if you, if you look at the other protocols in the literature, for example, the protocol by Gollin and Schultz that I men mentioned, basically what they give up is, is the, uh, um, so they, they require an honest majority. And actually, if you look at the, at the distance protocol that I mentioned, we, we found a flaw in that protocol. Um, so actually what they give up in certain settings is anonymity. Of course, this was not intended. So our, our, basically our proof technique here yields a realistic attack on the distant protocol. So yeah, we showed that this intersection here is empty, sorry. Okay, again looking at the flowchart of Dysmix, um, we, can, we can now see uh, where do we actually need to do communication. And we, uh, we, well, what happens is that we actually need four broadcasts, no matter which uh, control flow you take here. And um, if you have four broadcasts per run, then if you do this naively, it looks like that. So maybe you start the first run, it, has, it takes four rounds, and in the end you realize, okay, actually the protocol has been disrupted. Now we know, who, we know a malicious guy, we can exclude him, and we start a new run. Um, if, if you do it like that, and it's perfectly fine, you get uh, four plus four F communication rounds if F is the number of malicious parties. However, in Dysmix, we can actually do better um, by arranging the, the runs cleverly in parallel. So the idea is that we start the second run here even though the, the first run hasn't been finished yet. And that's, that's uh, not tri trivial, basically, because um, only after the first run has finished, we know who is malicious, uh, but we started the second run already. So we have to have some possibility to patch the second run, to kick out the, the malicious guy from the second run, um, even though the second run uh, is started already. But in the paper, we show how this works, and then uh, using this optimization, we, we get the number of rounds down to four plus two F. And um, we, we did the um, proof of concept implementation, and just to give you one number, if you, if you run this protocol with, with 50, 50 honest participants, actually, then uh, it takes seven seconds to complete, and to put this in, um, in comparison, maybe with, with previous work, so our own coin shuffle protocol from 2014, took in the same setting with 50 participants uh, almost three minutes. So we went from three minutes down to seven seconds, which is, I think, um, really a large improvement. And now what we, what we can use this Dysmix protocol for is to, to create a coin mixing protocol in Bitcoin. Um, we call this coin shuffle plus plus. And the idea is uh, to do coin mixing without a third party. So what the previous talk did is basically mixing with the, uh, with the guy in the middle, the tumbler. But, we, but what we want to do is, is mixing without any uh, third party. So the idea is uh, called coin join. It's pretty old in Bitcoin already. And um, the idea is that just we maybe have three parties and they, they perform a mixing transaction sending uh, there are three bitcoins 
uh, atomically to three fresh output addresses. And um, the idea is that theft here is really easy to prevent because this transaction is only valid if everybody signs it. So if it would take away money from any of those peers, they just would, would refuse to sign. Um, however, to, to perform this transaction in an anonymous way, we need to have a mechanism to create this uh, mixed list of fresh output addresses. And this is exactly where, where then dice mix comes into play. And now we just have to instantiate dice mix with uh, specific of Bitcoin. So uh, generating a fresh message actually means then generating a fresh Bitcoin address. And confirmation actually means uh, signing the coin join transaction. So the transaction that I showed in the, in the last slide. The, the nice feature here is that we even get this guarantee if somebody uh, refuses to sign the coin join transaction in the end, we know that he's malicious, we can exclude him and start from scratch. And if you, if you now compare this with the uh, previous talk, uh, with TumbleBit, then uh, so, first of all, let me say the, the comparison slide here uh, only covers the, the classic, uh, classic Tumblr mode of uh, TumbleBit because they had, they had performance numbers for this and this is uh, more similar to our setting actually. Um, so I think the, the big picture is that TumbleBit is, is way better in the uh, anonymity set, so it scales to, scales to larger anonymity set. And it has better off-chain performance. And by off-chain, I don't mean like in the sense of off-chain payments, but I mean things that are going on off the blockchain. For example, communication between the parties and so on. Um, on the other hand, um, coin shuffle is better for on-chain performance. For example, it requires less transactions. So uh, we've seen in a previous talk that uh, to do using uh, classic Tumblr mode to do one mixing transaction, actually each user needs, needs four transactions, whereas we need only one. And yeah, th there are some other things where, where you can compare those, those protocols with and actually the, this could be way longer. But I think uh, each of the protocols has its sweet spot. Um, another possible, up, more, more possible applications of dice mix actually, um, uh, one, one of them is value shuffle. Value shuffle is a combination of what I just showed you, coin shuffle plus plus with confidential transactions. Confidential transactions um, is a proposal by Craig Maxwell that uh, from the Bitcoin community that basically hides transactions, the, the amounts of money in the transactions. So not the users, but the monetary amounts. And if we put that together, we can hide the amounts and provide anonymity. And this actually means that users with different amounts of money can mix. And this is basically um, one of, I would say, one of the holy grails in coin mixing because this had, has always been a problem in practice. And it, it even, provides you the more features so then users can mix and pay simultaneously in one transaction. So with the current solutions, you first have to mix the coins and then spend them later. Um, but here with this solution, we can do this in one transaction and this has been accepted at Bitcoin 2017. If you're interested, see our poster tonight. Another thing is path shuffle and this is money mix, again money mixing, but not in cryptocurrencies, but in credit networks. If you're interested in credit networks, then uh, see the next talk by Pedro. And the idea here is basically similar to, to this coin join paradigm, just that we don't have such a coin join paradigm in the credit network, so we have to emulate that. And this work has been uh, accepted at Fopets actually this year. So um, the take home message is basically these CNETs are practical. We don't need an honest majority. It's, it's only very simple crypto, it's a simple protocol. And we can do it in four plus two F rounds for F malicious parties. And the second message, a peer-to-peer -peer -peer coin mixing is, pra is uh, practical using dice mix. And um, yeah, you don't need a central party and coin shuffle++ uh, plus plus is an efficient solution for that. Thanks. <laughs>